Anne Carbone, who sometimes joins us as a, a participator, participant, uh, is my dear guest today. So Ken, thank you so much for joining. Welcome. From Orangeburg. Mm -hmm. Orangeburg with an orange sweater on. Okay, very, very uh, color coordinated we are. So <laughs> I have a feeling that was uh, intentional. Well, welcome everyone to Designing the Life You Love, the new normal edition. Today is number 29 not bad going on 30 soon and this is our heart beating with excitement um Maltan Parlak from my team is my co-host and Seda is actually giving a talk uh right now so um she couldn't join us and Leia is going to join us from her car shortly so uh yeah I wanted to show you that uh the our virtual teas are taking off. We've been doing them with um, Philips design team globally. Uh, so I'm really excited about that um, from, you know, West Coast to the East Coast, from Europe to um, China, India. It's quite amazing. And, um, and I want for everybody who's coming maybe for the first time. And I, I don't think I've shown this slide in a while. I assume that you all know what we're doing here. But what we're doing here is we're deconstructing and reconstructing our lives in this moment. I mean, the moment of crisis is a great time um, for breaking down what we know and rebuilding because, hey, you know, COVID is breaking down everything we know anyway for us. So why not do it intentionally? And um, if we go to the next slide, I want to show you this because last um, week, if you were here, uh, Michael Roderick did a beautiful, beautiful presentation on AIM and how to make your message memorable. And AIM was, do you remember? Who remembers what AIM was? I remember. It was about um, being accessible, influential, yeah. and memorable. I learned my lesson. <laughs> and that's part of the reason that we're doing these teas is so that we can learn from each other. And um, he said, you have to kind of um, make what you, you do memorable. And I love the way that AIM spelled out those three words. So I changed deconstruct. You know, the short for deconstruct, reconstruct is um, DRE. So now it's deconstruct, explore, reconstruct, and express DRE. And I expect all of you to remember this from now on, okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and what we're doing is we're deconstructing. So taking the whole apart. Madam, you might need to mute everyone for a second. And um, when we deconstruct something or break something into its parts and pieces, what we're doing is really breaking our preconceptions. And um, then, yeah, come back. <laughs> Explore is about thinking of different ideas, exploring different ideas to open up our point of view and to think about the same things differently. Reconstruct is then putting the pieces together in new and exciting ways and expressing it is giving it form. So today we are in the expression, uh, the fourth step our, of our process. And so we're going to do a creative warm up. And as part of our expression, we're going to create a roadmap for this new brave world. And then Ken is going to talk to us about something I'm very excited about. He's going to share his journals with us and tell us how um, journaling changed his life, right? right? All right, so let's dive into this creative warm up. Oh, before we do the creative warm up, um, we're going to, for the next hour and maybe longer, um, if you choose to um, use these for, um, you know, for your life, these are the five design principles that um, really help guide our thinking. So we're going to think with empathy, 
for ourselves and for each other. Optimism, and this is really important. I learned um, this past week, this idea of stubborn optimism, and I love that. Um, so we're going to be stubbornly optimist. No matter how hard the problem, we're going to be stubborn about solving that problem. We're going to think holistically, see the big picture, so we can connect the dots in new ways. And as we do that, we're going to ask what if questions. And sometimes the best answers come from the worst places and we're going to go with that. And we're going to collaborate. That's why we're here together. And uh, I, I think the best thing about COVID, if there is, if I can say such a thing, is that it really forces us to collaborate because um, we need each other. We need to think through things together. So um, with that, let's go to our, oh yeah, and we're playing. We're playing with ideas here. We're being playful. There are no rights or wrongs here. Um, we're just having a good time, having some tea and playing with creative exercises. So talking of playing, today we're going to play with maps. And uh, I need, a, so we have a quote on maps. I need a volunteer to read our quote. Who'd like to um, unmute? <coughs> there you go. Okay, are you all being shy today? Come on, I need a, a, a volunteer. I'll go ahead, Aisha. Oh, thank you, Indrani. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the great thing in this world is not so much where we stand, as in what direction we are moving. To reach the port of heaven, we must sail sometimes with the wind and sometimes against it. But we must sail and not drift, nor lie at anchor by Oliver Wendell Holmes. I love that. Thank you. Uh, Meltan found that. Good job, Meltan. So, who knows who Oliver Wendell Holmes is? I do. Okay, John, wow. Tell us who he is. I just looked him up. He's a, you know, a great old writer and, and poet and uh, a man full of insights that had shared it um, with written, written verbiage. Along well the done. lines of, right, I mean, along the lines of like Jack London and, you know, that the classical um, authors that um, have written a lot of memorable and applicable stuff, as I take it. Thank you. Now we know why you're sitting at the in the library, right? <laughs> and, and my elementary school was named Al after Oliver Wendell Holmes. Oh, Cynthia, he, thank he you. Ohio, so that was, I said, oh. <laughs> and he and was a judge. That's a nice coincidence. And he was a judge, yes. And that's why I wanted to also feature him today because, you know, it, it felt meaningful for the um, Supreme Court um, nomination that's going on. All right, so warm up exercise. We, let's draw the map to our hearts. And so Matam took a stab at this. We're gonna discover the, um, the, the map to Matam's heart. Matam, you wanna unmute and tell us? Yes, so um, I was just thinking to what are the important things and i think the heart of my heart is my family and i just love and like to have my home my friends beach is a good part music absolutely what is maybe the most important thing but as well as cooking and i love taking care of my plants and reading so i just wanted to visualize my heart with the important Thanks. Yeah. So when uh, Matam and I talked uh, about half an hour ago, <laughs> Matam said the the map to my heart goes the, the the road to my heart goes through my stomach. Stomach. There we go. <laughs> All right. So now it's your turn. Let's take two minutes. Matam, you want to come out of the um, exercise so I can say hello to everyone while everyone is drawing. Nice. All right. Cheryl is back. Hi, Cheryl. Nice to see you. 
And Annette was just here and Christine, nice to see you. Christine, we're gonna go for a walk as soon as you're out, out of your quarantine, right? Keep me posted. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Good to see you. Laura, is this your first time? No. Hi. No, um, I've been here a few times that I was busy with work, so I haven't, haven't been here for a while. So I'm coming back. I'm, I I'm, love that. I'm in Argentina, it, actually. <laughs> so hello. Nice. Hello. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. And Brian is here. Hi, Brian. Let's see. Satwar. Did I say that right? I don't know if she heard me, but Christine is here from Calgary. Hi, Christine. One of my dear friends, Darcy, is in Calgary. Beautiful. <laughs> nice. I heard that it snowed there like yesterday or something. It was a sprinkle of just prettiness. It's all melted now. Oh, nice. Cool. So Gonzalo is here. Hi, Gonzalo from Peru. How cool is that? And Denise Hola. is here. Hola. Denise, you're on book number what? <laughs> Everyone, Denise doesn't sleep. She sorry, reads books. Sorry, sorry. I, I muted. Uh, 215 as of today. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, I did love eat a peach. There's so many good nuggets about that. <laughs> Um, about uh, the price of noodles. If the noodles are made for Japanese or Chinese food, they're $10. But if they're made for Italian food, they're $30, even though they're the same noodles. <laughs> yeah, Denise, could you put a link into the um, chat about that? Eat a Peach, everyone, is yeah. a book that uh, we were talking about. It's this amazing American chef, Korean American chef, um, David Chang, his autobiography. And it's um, an amazing. And um, there's a whole section on lobsters that reads like a deconstruction, reconstruction chapter. So please um, take a look at that. And then Elena or Elena is here. I said hello. And Cynthia is here. Susanna is here. Nice, nice. And Doug is back. Hi, Doug. Let's see. How am I doing on time? All right, you've had enough time. Verda, hello. Phoebe, hello. All right, let's show our, um, the maps to our heart. I know you're all drawing, still drawing. Ooh, how cool is that? Beautiful, ooh, Ken. Now we know how to uh, reach Ken's heart through art and music. Love it. Anybody want to unmute and tell us? I want to hear what Varda, how is Varda's um, map to her heart goes. <laughs> Hi, Ashe. How's everyone? <laughs> oh, well, I can't believe this is 29. Right? <laughs> 29th T. <laughs> it's crazy. So yeah, um, my, my map, well, there's my, I feel like all things creative, all the things that I do, I used, I used to put my art, but I realized it's much bigger than that. And it's pretty much anything that is creative. My ideas, my crazy ideas, my, I have a podcast now, my podcast, my activism, all of that really feeds me and that is feeds my heart. And then my family, I put my son and my boyfriend on this. And then at the bottom, I put our hearts need to be healthy. So my health. Beautiful. And congratulations on your podcast. Do you want to put a link? Oh, sure. Can we listen to it? Yeah, please put a link into the chat box. And then, um, Stephanie and Jack Gelman joined us from their car and <laughs> Jack, thank you for the hearts. <laughs> we yeah, heart uh, you back. <laughs> we didn't draw us, so we dug out uh, a heart stone to show you. Excellent. Very cool. 
All right. Um, hey, what I would love, please send me your hearts. Okay. Uh, last time I said this, please send me your, what, what did we do last week? Oh, I wanted your baklavas, the reconstruction of baklavas. And you all failed your homework, let me tell you, because I didn't get oh. one baklava of any kind. And <laughs> so this time, at least send me your heart so I know how to reach your hearts. I need the roadmap, okay? And um, I'll forget about the baklavas. But if you get inspired to deconstruct and reconstruct a baklava, you can always send it. Um, a photograph will suffice. All right, Matam, let's go back into the roadmap because I want to make sure that we have enough time for um, Ken. Um, as much as I, I love seeing everybody's maps, you'll send them to me. But now it's time for us to create a roadmap for this new, brave new world. Because um, I don't know if you noticed, but there are no roadmaps to the um, crisis, the situation that we're in. Oh, um, Mantam, please mute us. And uh, it's funny because I was thinking the other day, I used to always end my talks about design the life you love by saying, hey, when Bibi and I, my husband and partner and I, when Bibi and I were growing up, there was a roadmap. It was a simple roadmap. You uh, went to school, you worked hard, uh, you got a job, you got married, you had kids. That was, the, that was the roadmap to a good life. So nobody really needed to design their life. You just had to follow the roadmap. And I, I used to say, well, but now with my, you know, with our kids, I feel like I can't give them that roadmap. You know, who am I to tell them? Like, maybe they don't need to go to school. Maybe they don't want to get married. You know, they can um, design their, you know, gen gender and sexual preferences. It's, um, it's a whole new world out there. And then boom, uh, COVID strikes. And now I feel like, hey, uh, there are no roadmaps, no matter what the age, and we just have to figure it out ourselves. So let's go into uh, some examples of the roadmap. Um, this is one that we did with the Harvard Business Review team, and this actually inspires our map today. The, um, we'll show, it, show you a template similar to this. But just look at the design land, which is an island onto itself. And there is North um, Harvard Business Review Group land, and then there's South Harvard um, HBR land, and there's the Sea of Audience. And at the bottom, if you can see that, there's a, a, a reef of fear with sharks and um, Scott, uh, Scott Bernard, Bernard I can't read that, but um, he's one of their uh, HBR's editors. Um, there's mm, Temple of Brand Look. It's all a lot of fun. And there is, uh, there is certain uh, bridges that get you to the other side. There's an idea map. So you get the idea. But let's go to some of the other slides. And I was thinking of... Um, I don't know if you've seen Design the Work You Love that I've been doing for Thinkers 50, which are visual interviews with some amazing people uh, about the work they love. And I was looking at Rene Moborn, who is the author or the co-author of Blue Ocean Strategy. And she told me that her mot motto, <laughs> uh, motto in Turkish, her motto is Blue Oceans Ahead create, don't compete. And I thought, oh, that's a good one for, for our binoculars, for our map today. And then if we go to the next one, I think, um, you know, you could also do things like that in, like this in your map, put your happy place. This is um, uh, from the Philips team, uh, somebody's happy place in the middle of uh, a pool, or it's in the middle of an island, you know. And then the next one, I think we, ha ah, we have a couple from our past teas. Uh, this is uh, Annette 
map. Annette, I hope you'll do a new map or add to your old map today. And then this was Johannes who uh, was here last week. And this is his map from a couple uh, weeks back. So with that, uh, let's look at our template. You can use this template or make your own um, map of the new world. And um, hold on, Matt, and don't go yet. Come back. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> I see. Um, thank you. Uh, and the map has different icons that you can use for inspiration. You can also make up your own um, icons. Ships of discovery, bridges of collaboration, idea factory. Uh, there, there could be some sharks, there could be some rivers of knowledge or other um, fish of luck, mountains of projects. You, you get the idea. You can take, we'll leave this up. Um, you can also take a picture of this for future use. And remember, there can be guardian angels, rocks in the way, and dragons to be slain. Okay, your turn. And you have five minutes. Let's start this. Um, and I'm going to open the door. I think one of my um, teenagers just came home and I'll be right back. Hold on. Yep, a 16 year old who doesn't know where her keys are. <laughs> Any questions, by the way, while we're doing this? Hi, Allah. I'm doing my tea. That's okay. Great. Hi, Charles. Good to see you. Let's see. And Phoebe is here. Nice. And Patricia is here. Hi. Let's see. Kim? Is that Kim? <laughs> Hi, hi. <laughs> and Dallas is here. Hi, Dallas. Hi, Rita. Hi, Larry. <laughs> Good to see you. Let's see. Did I say hello to everyone? Hi, Aisha. Aisha, sorry. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> Who's that? I can't That's see Ashley. you now. Yeah, I'm used to the Arabic um, pronunciation of your name. Oh, Ashley, hi. Yes, hi, you hi. Could, I, I can go by both, totally. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ashe, Sheila Warfield. Sheila, I uh, saw you were there, but then you, I think you went to the um, kitchen or something. I didn't see you. Good to see you. Oh, and Mary is here. Hi, Mary. Hi, Van. <laughs> Hi, Aisha. How are you? Are you making a beautiful yeah. black and white map? I haven't finished it. I'll have it. I'll send it to you. I love it. Thank you. That's going to be a masterpiece. Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. <laughs> cool. How Hello. Hello. Let's see. Okay, um, since we do share by chat, as you're making your map, you want to pick any insights really. and um, share them in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Like, does mapping your, your new life make you think of things? If so, put it in the chat so we can all hear it. Oh, yeah. I know. So, Please, um, Stephanie and Jack, don't draw and drive. That's not a good idea. 
And um, so I called the same number, which is like the surgery number. And uh, they said that um, Pinkowski. There we go. Oops. <laughs> cool. Oh, nice. So, um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I just want to go down my, oh, for some reason, I don't see all of you, you know, it's funny, but I see you, like Christine, and Katya. Oh, and Kathy Riley is here. Hi, Kathy. Jen, Jaren. Oh, and Isabel is here. Hello, hello. And Elizabeth is here. Nice. Maybe I said hello already. And um, Leah told me one of hers. Oh, and Leslie is here. Hi, Leslie. Cool. I'm glad you could come. And Mafa is here. By the way, I muted everyone. So if you're talking to me, please unmute yourselves. <laughs> um, nice. And then um, Marie is here. Melissa. Nayara. Rita. Sasha. Great. Okay. But I'm going to, and Yulia is joining us for the first time. So I want to hear how Yulia, Yulia how, how are you doing? Hi, um, it's a little bit, I don't know. I wasn't expecting this. So I'm finding it a little <laughs> bit difficult. Um, but at the same time, it's really enjoyable. Great. Uh, you're very courageous, you know, for jumping in like this. This is one of our most... Um, um, I wouldn't say complex, but maybe demanding exercises. So um, let's see if, um, so I'm, I'm really excited that you joined. And what we do is we do one um, tool from our toolbox, which is from my book, Design the Life You Love. And, uh, and some, some of the exercises are, are not even in the book, like the roadmap is not even in the book. And we just do them one by one. And then we, when we run out of stuff, um, tools, we kind of circle back again. And so some, some of you have done the roadmap two, three times, maybe four, three times probably. And, um, and some of you um, are just new to the game. So um, let's hear if anybody wants to unmute themselves and please continue to... Um, to add your insights into the um, chat box because that's really the way we learn from each other. Um, but who wants to join, um, you know, and talk, tell us some of their insights as they were um, mapping their, their new, new roadmap? I want to hear from Annette actually. Yeah, Annette, could you tell us how, how is it to roadmap for the umpteen time? <laughs> So, so it's a challenge today because my pencil on my iPad was out of battery. So I had to do with paper. Um, and you might recognize the journal. It's the Ooh, one your team designed. No. Oh, how cool. Yeah, and we so, have to. The, um, so hold on, because that, that, that was great advertising. Annette. <laughs> so Annette is using one of the <clears throat> notebooks that... Uh, we designed and Matam is going to put a link to the notebooks in, in the chat box so you can all check them out. Okay, Annette, sorry. So, um, so my map's the first time I've done it on paper in your exercise. And um, I put some pirates. So some of my pirates that I'm going to go to the island of love with are Aisha and um, Terry, and Oshok, and my friend Mary. And the map of how we're gonna get there is D, Re, and then the four R's that I earned, learned this morning from Oshok's session. The, um, and you know, uh, Oshoke was one of our first guests. So 
uh, if you were here, maybe like, Madam, I want to say like our third or fourth um, tea, we should invite her back again. So she, yes. this morning she did a beautiful yes. thing on 100 Leaders, um, which is an ongoing conference. And um, about, I want to say reconstruction, right? And the four R's were, do you remember? Were, yeah, it, I, I wrote them down here. It's re-language, it's um, recalibrate, refocus, and reunite. Uh, Okay, and you know what? We, we need to invite um, Oshoke back to tell us about the R's. Yes. Annette, thank you so much. That was, oh, and Todd is here. Cool. <laughs> so who, who would like to share their insights? Anyone who did the roadmap for the first time? How was that? Um, I feel like my roadmap um, kind of looks like a Pac-Man. Uh, <laughs> how do I put this? I, the, the path of a Pac-Man. I love like, it. Yeah. Do, can you show it to us, Ashley? I know, I think well, you're on your I phone. Just, but... I just started because I, um, sorry, I'm really bad at this. Um, I just started hey, because I was, I was trying to, um, copy down all those cool icons that you had. They were so inspiring. So I spent my time doing that. But anyway, yeah, I have my, my island of my new life, otherwise known as paradise. And um, yeah, so that's all I've gotten so far. Okay, great. So um, Ashley, that's great. But tell us the way you were talking about it was even exciting that you were saying it's like Pac-Man. <laughs> um, well, you know, I've had a very, um, very windy uh, road to in path in my life that was not linear whatsoever. And I feel like I'm just coming to my, into my own in my mid fifties, which is kind of funny. And I'm trying to start a new career. Um, and I feel like there are all these things that I've been dodging. Well, so that's what I mean by Pac-Man. Like somebody's trying to like eat me along the way and I'm dodging, basically dodging bullets, I guess you could say. I love that. What a great metaphor. How cool is that? Okay, um, Ashley, your homework is to finish your map and send, send us an example so we can uh, share. Oh, okay. and, um, and Matt, Sam, you know what we should do is um, let's put a picture, the, um, the map kind of template into our um, newsletter. So everybody who attended today can get that and they can continue to do the journey map, um, you know, in their own time. Sure. Ashley, is oh. there a way you could share like what one of those bullets was um, in the interest you mean, of- You mean like um, the, like a real, uh, how do I put this? Nothing too personal, just like something well, that no, no, was no, a no. roadblock No, 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 actually I think the bullets have been coming from my own mind, quite honestly, okay. that have been sort of obstacles for me. So, um, okay. yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Ashley, thanks for sharing that. And I think uh, we're all here because we're dodging the bullets that um, are generated by our, our own minds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Figuring that out, you know? I, yeah. I just Thank wanted you. to say, I found yeah, the whole process. That. This is Cynthia, I found the whole process fascinating. I was drawing in my mind more than on the paper, even though I put something here, but it was just uh, fascinating to think of the things like um, I had a land of light, light and laughter, and I had an islet of joy in there, and then I had an area of new beginnings, and then I had a forest of falling down, and next to it, a recovery zone. It was an uh, area of breath of fresh air that came in. So just thinking of these things were so much fun and, and just playing around with it and an express way of love. And so thank you for this <laughs> opportunity. Cynthia, thank you. I mean, you just inspired all of us and I want to have exactly your map 
So when you take it out of your mind and put it on paper, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be beautiful. I just want to capture those, that um, island of, or place of lightness and laughter and the, um, what was it? The forest of um, falling? Of falling down. Forest falling of falling down. down. Yes. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, please, please. Then the recovery it. zone of breath of fresh air. How cool is that? I mean, that, that alone was yeah. just the, the biggest lesson just now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you are a natural map maker, Cynthia. <laughs> All right, and together with Ashley's uh, uh, Pac-Man, this, you know, we just need to like launch a couple Pac-Man into this map and, and this is too much fun. Okay, maybe um, just one more person for like a couple minutes and then I need to throw the, the mic over to my friend, Ken. Oh. Who's unmuting themselves? I say it's Sheila. Can you hear me? Yes, Sheila, go for it. Well, um, so uh, so my map, it's, boy, this moment in time, it reflects my current state. And so on my map, I have um, this diagram that is really me at the core and is really about being grounded in values and positivity and appreciating the good in this world and connected to it is my the loved ones my family and then I have a bridge over to career but then um, underneath this core is kind of um, another part I was I look I, I, I thought about just how do you always how do I really always unleash my full potential so there are parts of me that I still have to discover. So, so being patient and having courage and, um, and focus is important. But what's really, what really came to mind for me was, you know, around this island of me, roadmap to me, I have this, this water and I, when I drew the water, it, my first instinct was that it's good. All this around me is good and I just need to see the potential of good. And when I embark upon leaving parts of me or you don't, can't leave parts of me, when I venture out, then I just need to make sure I pack the right things with me, right? So I'm properly prepared to traverse the wavy rocky waters or to protect myself from what might be in the sea. Um, so the water for me is, is to always see the good that surrounds my life. And then, um, and then there's an island, <laughs> a, a, a satellite that I had career. And on that, I had the bridge of collaboration, but then I thought, okay, remaining purposeful, but also there's a lot of navigation right now and just managing through that, being confident in how I navigate. And then as we continue to talk, there's this, I'm gonna highlight it. There's this, um, there's this area highlighted here. And it's like, well, that's the mainland with chaos and social and all the things that perhaps <laughs> is crazy in the world, but I just will stay grounded and centered on my own values. So. I love it. And um, Sheila, I loved what you said about, you know, there are parts of you that remain to be discovered. Like, yes. uh, like new land. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Excellent. How cool is that? And um, Sheila, you know, it's funny because when I was looking at your name, I read it as like Sat Warfield. Yes. And I'm like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's Sheila, my friend. <laughs> Yes. So thank you. I'm, I'm glad you, you um, unmuted yourself because oh. <laughs> otherwise I was going to be like, oh, a, a new person. I don't know. Um, okay. So, um, Matam, let's go back to our presentation. Everyone, so please, I need to see these maps because they're so incredibly inspirational. 
And if you want to explain it a little bit and allow us to share, we, that would be lovely. And, um, but now, without further ado, I want the pass, to pass the mic to Ken. Ken, I'm throwing the mic to you. And Ken Carbone is one of my dear friends um, who was introduced, we were introduced by um, Alan Chachnov, who's the chair of products of design at School of Visual Arts. And we were at a design function, I think maybe at MoMA. And Alan said, um, you really need to meet a good person, a good man. And he just introduced me to Ken and then um, we became friends. And I'm so excited because Ken is the co-founder of Carbone Smolan uh, and Leslie, uh, his partner is here as well. So Leslie, that, I'm really happy that you're here. And Ken has a, an apple uh, on his head because one of his projects was drawing one apple a day which I think kept the doctor away. And I mean, Ken has done so many great things. He uh, did the branding uh, of the Louvre Museum, which always kind of like sticks in my mind because it's so amazingly incredible and probably the only um, branding that is carved in marble um, that I, I know of. Uh, and what else? Um, well, the rest actually, Ken, you could talk about, but the, and another uh, maybe uh, you know, uh, thing about Ken that's fascinating that not many people know is that Ken knows all the small museums wherever he goes, he discovers them. So, okay, I'll stop talking. Let's come out of the screen so we can see Ken. And Ken, thank you so much for coming today. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Um, there, there's uh, so many things to say. I had to cut myself off. So that's okay. You, that's okay. You, you could talk to the Rome and uh, the American Academy and all those great things. So, well, it's uh, no, it's a great pleasure uh, to uh, uh, be here at the tea. I've enjoyed a few of these, and I think that it's such a great audience and a great group of uh, like-minded individuals. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to actually do a, a screen share here to show you some visuals. So uh, bear with me one second. I'll do that. Let's see if this works. While you do that, I'll put a bunch of links in the um, chat. Okay. All of us. Does everyone see that? Yes. We're good? We're good? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to, uh, uh, again, thank uh, Aisha for inviting me, but I also wanted to give a little update uh, to her drawing, if I may. Um, I, yes, I used to uh, shave my head, <laughs> but uh, that's changed. So uh, this is the new uh, improved version of Ken. Um, hope you don't mind, uh, Aisha. <laughs> I love it. I, okay. It's the best collaboration. Right. Um, I, uh, she's right. I, at, uh, in, in 2015, I took on a project to draw an apple a day for a year, which uh, resulted in 365 uh, works of uh, distinctly uh, um, individual and kind of very diverse uh, works of art, which was a great project. I'm not going to touch much on that today, but I'm going to just share with you something I'm really excited about uh, these days. Um, so just, okay, first of all, uh, this is kind of going back a bit. Uh, as she said that uh, I had a design and branding company for over 40 years, it was the Carbone Smolin Agency. Uh, and uh, I did that with, uh, this is my partner, Leslie Smolin, and uh, we had a great business together. And we decided that it was so great that maybe we should quit while we're ahead. So last December, we decided to close our agency after 42 years. Uh, it was a great run, but uh, we were both interested in other things uh, and pursuing other creative things in our lives. So we decided to close up shop and that was it. Uh, I feel pretty good about that right now, given where the world is, but it was good while it lasted. And now we're on to exciting and uh, all kinds of different um, ways to kind of spend our time. Uh, whoops. That uh, 
all that kind of came together in a, a great book that we produced a few years ago, which highlights 35 projects that uh, we were very beloved to us. They were stories about great collaborations with some fantastic clients. We've been very spoiled over the years. We work with great clients internationally. We've worked with un unlikely clients like the Dalai Lama, for example. We, we worked with uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, we worked with uh, various uh, foreign governments governments uh, in, in places all over the world, from Indonesia to Mexico to Paris. So it's been a very good run, but uh, that's that. And we, um, fortunately, we found a company uh, in Chicago named 50,000 Feet, and we formed a strategic alliance with them, and they essentially uh, took over our business. Now, one thing that I think was absolutely central to being able to sustain myself creatively uh, with all the different kinds of work we did for corporations, for uh, uh, consumer companies, consumer product companies, to cultural institutions, from branding to signage to packaging to books. All of those things required a constant uh, kind of vitality in the creative process. And the thing I, I always attributed to for my own creativity uh, was this. Uh, for over 30 years, I've been keeping uh, these kind of creative journals, you can call them diaries, scrapbooks, whatever, but uh, it's, a, it's a place basically which is like a laboratory for me, a laboratory of ideas and experimentation where there was only one rule in the way I conducted uh, my experimentation in these books, and that was to embrace reckless abandon. Everything else about my business and in my life is relatively controlled. So I thought that that's not something I want to do here. So the, the whole idea of is just let it all go, let it all hang out. Don't worry about how precious it is or who's going to see it. It was really a to fill a creative well that would serve me throughout my business and also my, uh, as an artist. Um, I have over the years uh, been able to exhibit these journals and this is at the Museum of Design in Atlanta. They did a nice little exhibit of uh, a selection of my journals. Uh, I have also embraced uh, giving many lectures about these and uh, various articles have been written. But most recently I've started to do a, um, some workshops about journals because I run into people and they say, you know, I started a journal, but I just couldn't keep with it, uh, this and that. And I realized that this is not uncommon. So I put together a two-day workshop where I take people through the process of not only how to start one, but how to commit to it as a life tool. Now, that whole thing is taking on a whole new dimension, uh, dimension which I pr proudly announced uh, last month uh, on Instagram that I'm going to finally, at the encouragement of some people I really respect, to, uh, to do a book about, not necessarily about the journals, but, but about the stories that are in the journals. Because when I look at it, the nearly 8,000 pages I have in these journals, there are literally 8,000 discrete stories. And these are stories that I think that has some kind of universal connection and I think audiences may be interested, but we'll see. I'm just starting the book, but I wanted to share with you what, what the way it's being structured and uh, to give you a, a sense of how I'm going to take that 30 plus years of life and put it together in some kind of publication that uh, people may enjoy, enjoy having. So there are gonna be 10 chapters. Um, such as chapter, I don't know if it's chapter one or chapter three, but A Sensual Feast will be about art and experience. Uh, as I showed in my heart, there are really two main chambers in my heart. One is art and the other is music, which I'll talk about in a minute. But the, um, uh, I spend an enormous amount of time in the presence of great art, whether it's in books or yesterday, I, actually I went to a few galleries in Chelsea it was the first time in nine months that I was in front of real art rather than seeing it virtually on the screen. And I can't tell you how, how excited I was to be there, to be so close to some of the paintings that I, that I saw. So art and experience is a big part of my life and I will have many, many stories uh, that I will share with readers about that. Um, the other thing is, uh, the second chapter is Bibliophilia. Uh, bibliophilia is, uh, you know, more books 
please, do, do we ever have enough books? In my case, no. Uh, I have a, I tried a policy which was one book in, one book out, and I have totally failed. I have run out of bookshelves, but I enjoy just books as objects and, and what they give me and how they feed my soul. Now, what I do, and I, and I tend to read more nonfiction than fiction, but when I do read books of fiction, um, normally I'll take a small photocopy of the cover of a book and that becomes my bookmark in the book. And then when I'm done with that book, I paste it in my journal and I write what my feelings were about that book. It's kind of like a, an assignment. It's like a book report. And in, when it comes to fiction, um, I like, you know, I see the, the characters in my head uh, and I will draw them in my book. So what did those characters actually look like as I was reading the book? So in the event that this wonderful book, All, All the Light We Cannot See, which is something one I highly recommend, um, in the event that it becomes a major motion picture at some time, at one point, the characters in the motion picture will not be the characters that I've drawn on this page here. This uh, is one of my favorite books too. I love that. I, I want to see the characters you drew up close. Is that the little girl? At yes. The, yes, at the top there. At the there. center? Yes, the, exactly. The, oh, cool. Yes. So uh, take a picture of the screen. Maybe you can take a take. A, I actually, yeah. uh, I showed yeah. this, uh, this to the author. I met the author in, in Rome. And he said huh. it's the first time that anyone had ever that he knows that anyone had ever done that. And he was really delighted to have a, a copy of this uh, spread. So cool. Um, now, most of my life has been spent as, as a designer, but uh, I've always seen design more as a noun than a verb. And I think design is everywhere. And I use this particular example. You may have seen this wonderful vase, uh, that is designed by 40,000 bees plus a, uh, a, a designer named uh, Libiterni, I believe he's a Frenchman. But uh, what I love about this is this is the intersection between nature and humans. And, it came, and this, this is the way I wish design, and design would work, this kind of natural extension of things that are already in, our, in, our, in, in the world and we can embrace them and make beautiful things like this. Um, flora and fauna will be a chapter about the natural world. I believe the nature has all the answers. So whatever problem we have with our own species, it can be solved if we look closely at nature. Uh, I'm currently as obsessed with trees and everything they can teach us. I do them in my, in my uh, paintings and things that, I, that I'm working on in my studio. But uh, the natural world is, is without boundaries in terms of the, the wonder that we can experience there. Another chapter is uh, Wonder World, Science and Technology. Uh, it is part of our lives and it is a double-edged sword. We can experience incredible things that can serve humanity in, in, in a very, very beneficial way. And then also there's the other side of it that technology can be used in a way that uh, can be very unfortunate to humanity. But I love that balance. And I think it it's puts the onus on scientists to, even if they, they know they can do this, I wish scientists would ask more of the question, should they do it? Um, I remember last year, there was, uh, there was a lab in, in Italy that was experimenting with a, a, uh, a mosquito that was gonna be genetically engineered that it could not transmit malaria. It's a fabulous idea, fabulous idea. But I'm not sure they really thought through what the pot potential uh, consequences of that would be before they released that into the wild. So science and technology, very fascinating. I have a, I'm kind of a science nerd and uh, really follow uh, uh, science from the standpoint of what it's doing for us and what it shouldn't do for us. We are all human, it's another chapter some more than others. Um, I have so many pages in my journals where I've paid tribute to people I think are just, have contributed to a certain richness in our lives. And certainly I've just picked one here, which is Bill Cunningham. I was always a Bill Cunningham fan. What a delightful individual. 
Uh, and I think these kind of people, for me, they, they've touched my life and I want to acknowledge that, especially when they're no longer with us. So we have humans that are quite good to, to our lives and then we have others that are less so. So in, uh, when Obama uh, took out uh, Osama bin Laden, I felt it needed to be in my book, even though that was kind of the dark side of humanity. I, through my business, through life, I've been very fortunate to travel to absolutely wonderful places. So there's plenty in my journals which reflect those experiences. In this case, after I went to the Frida Kahlo Museum uh, in, in, in Mexico, which was a, a wonderful experience unto itself. I mentioned that uh, music is at least half of my life. Um, I've been a guitarist for over 50 years. Uh, I'm untrained, but I'm very, very focused on making music. I, I'm more of a composer than I am a performer, but it's a very big part of my life. And certainly musicians that I have found influential, I will pay tribute to them, whether they're here with us or not. Uh, in this case, uh, when Prince died, I felt that this was my kind of visual eulogy uh, to him. Also in my books, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very kind of, um, I have no rules as to what kind of materials I use for the imagery. In this case, I'm using acrylic or something and other cases I'll be drawing or using watercolor. I like that the kind of vitality and the richness of all kinds of materials in the book. Triumph and tragedy. Oh, I misspelled triumph, sorry. Uh, the, um, this will be another chapter, uh, basically a, a recent history of a, of a small planet. Uh, we all know this event. We uh, can, may remember can that, this. That, that, that's, that's a funny misspelling right there. It's a merger yes. between Trump and triumph. Yeah, I know. I, 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 now. I, think, uh, <laughs> I think you were just like, uh, Too much Trump on my mind, yes. I, I was going to just uh, trying to figure out how to say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this was, uh, uh, this is kind of a blend of tr tragedy and triumph. Uh, what, a, what an amazing, amazing event. I mean, I still get chills when I think about that happening. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, it's something that I just don't want it to kind of flow or float away from my brain. I, these are the kind of experiences I think are, have been important in my life and I put them in my journals to share. And then finally, there'll be a chapter, uh, Mysteriously Mysterious, uh, an anomalous miscellany, which is just haphazard stuff that I found interesting or little bits of art that I've created with no rhyme or reason, not to be led anywhere else but uh, I hope that they will bring delight to uh, the people that buy the book. So that's kind of what I'm doing mostly these days and uh, very engaged in that and wish me luck because publishing is not an easy endeavor. And uh, I hope that in 2021, uh, I'll have a book to maybe come back and talk about. Yay, yes, good luck. You don't need any luck. This, these are just incredibly beautiful. And uh, when you were telling me about like how when you go through your journals, every page you can, just takes you right back to that moment. I mean, your pages took me right back to the moments that I know of. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember the, that landing of the... Uh, the the jet on the on um, Hudson River yeah. and we were at the time we had a penthouse office on Broadway we couldn't see it but we could see pieces of the Hudson and kind of hearing this new news come in and in your drawing I think there was like a a, a mythical fish underneath very good like that. oh I'm glad right? you saw that yes yeah. there was a I was a... paying attention there's a sea goddess underwater. Yes, exactly. Ooh, holding, holding them up, not letting right. it go yeah. down. So, but oh, how so often do we actually literally experience miracles in our lives? That was a miracle. I needed that to put that in my journal. 
So yeah. uh, yes, the, the journals are kind of a time capsule. Uh, absolutely. When I go back to the books that I've uh, kept in my journals, uh, and I read my little book review, it's almost like rereading the book again. It's a fantastic way to kind of connect to these wonderful things that we read in our lives. So uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to uh, respond. Yeah, so um, Ken, I just want to tell everyone, so our um, tea time is from five to six. So if anybody needs to leave, um, please, uh, we don't mind. But Ken, if you don't mind, uh, you, if you do have time, I would love to hang out a little bit longer and okay. ask you questions. So I whoever wants to stay, please do. Okay. Yeah. I do. Uh, I, I have to leave in about five, though, if, if that's okay. Absolutely. Okay. So right. I do have one question, if I may. Yeah, uh, me too. Oh, okay. Uh, Christine, you go ahead. You go ahead. I can always ask Ken after. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just interested as to whether or not you had a strategy for your sort of commitment on a daily basis to do that. You know, yes. How did you decide each day? Yeah, well, yes, my strategy is don't do it on a daily basis. Ah, okay. That's the first bit of failure, I think, okay. in journaling. If, you, if, it's, if it's forced, you'll never keep a journal. Okay, that's lovely, yeah. yeah. So I, uh, there, are, there have been, and if, I don't know if you noticed that I date each of my yes. pages. Yes, yes. Uh, you can go through my journals and you'll see sometimes a two-week gap because I don't just put anything down. Right. It, has to, it has to kind of strike a nerve for me to put it in the book. That's really, really very valuable and helps. lovely and thank you. Okay. Ken, have you, I, I've been working on journaling and I, I vacillate back and forth between a digital version and a hand, handwritten version. Uh, the digital is convenient because I can import you know, photos I've taken but it's not as personal as the handwritten stuff. Um, if you had the, is this the only way you journal or do you do uh, something else in addition to this? Um, the, I, I have different kinds of sketchbooks, but, uh, and, uh, but I, this is, this is, I actually, I have to say that uh, the reason I'm doing this book is that some 30 years ago, I bought 40 copies of a certain kind of sketchbook and I'm with book 39. And at, after book 40, I'm going to retire this particular series. So now's the time to kind of look back over it. And it has been absolutely joyful to look back and start to edit it and pull together what is important to me and uh, I think is worth sharing. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, I, yeah, I do think there are digital tools that are fabulous too, but uh, I can tell you that uh, the, the tangibility of the journal is fantastic. And in my workshop, I, I, have, a, I have a slide that shows, uh, uh, it says uh, circa 1982, and it shows a picture of floppy disks, right? And then the next slide is circa 1482, and it's a, sh it's a shot of Da Vinci's journal, which you could still see today. I don't know if you can open a floppy disk today. So I love the artifact. I love the tangibility of the journal. And uh, that's, that's my, that has been my choice and I'm happy with that solution. I do too. What I do is I get to a certain uh, file size and then I print it out for my, you know, and file it um, right. for my kids to read or whoever later in life. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I want to be sorry, uh, Dallas. We're over time here, so let's uh, because uh, Ken, you did mention you need to go at six or five. So Dallas, could we uh, come back to you next week? I just wanted to know when the next workshop is that Ken's having. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm uh, I'm thinking about when that'll be scheduled. Um, the 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 challenge is. Uh, I just did one virtually, and if you're interested, or if anyone's interested, maybe you can. Uh, I'll leave my um, uh, my email address in 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 the chat, and if if I get, you know, I need at least 10, 12 people, something like that, to uh, make it happen. But I will uh, share that with you, uh, and if you're interested, please contact me, and uh, we can talk further. Thank you. Great.
Thank you. And thank you, Dallas. I'm glad you asked that question. I was going to ask the, exactly the same thing. So um, can please put the, uh, your email in there? Uh, I want to come to your workshop for sure. And um, Maltan, we have uh, two links. If you can put them into the um, chat box, everyone, um, we're doing this incredibly amazing um, project around uh, women's health. So if you could uh, help us with the survey, Maltan will put the link. And then our next workshop, Design the Life and Work You Love, is happening on October 24th. And you do have a discount code and Maltan will again put the um, link in the chat. So on that note, um, everyone, thank you so much for coming. And Ken, I'm so, so glad thank you. that you could join as our guest today. I'm in mm -hmm. awe of your work and your journals are so inspirational. Thank I want to buy 4D. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you journals very much. And, and give myself that challenge, but thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ciao, ciao.